Welcome to today's video. I have a Samsung front load washing machine here. Today we're troubleshooting the problem of this washing machine going unbalanced and shaking too much and it's preventing it from either spinning out fully or it just shuts down and doesn't do anything else. You could get a DC error code, it could make noise, it could do a few different things here. So let's go ahead and go through all the different steps that we would do at our shop to fix this and troubleshoot it. Or decide maybe we gotta get a new washing machine because it's a little too expensive to fix. And for tools today, all I have is my standard drill gun, um, just with a Phillips head screwdriver on it. If we need other bits, I will let you know. You don't really need a fancy one. This is actually just a Walmart hyper tough drill. And if you decide you want a drill like this to make short work of a washing machine, make sure to check for the product link in the description. I will have that available, as well as any other tools that I have in using this video. So let's get started on some things. First, let's start off with the easiest thing you wanna make sure that the washer's actually leveled to your floor. Take a leveler and make sure that it is not sagging to any one side, both on the front and the rear of the washer. If you find out that you do need to level it, your Samsung washer should have feet underneath on each corner that you can screw in and out. Also make sure that your floor itself is not weak as your washer does need a firm, hard surface to sit on. If you still find that you have issues, anti-vibration pads could help you if your floor is a little bit imperfect and i do have a link for a anti-vibration mat in the description and a product tag as well next let's go to the rear of the washing machine there should be two phillips head screws that you can remove to take the top cover of the washing machine off once the screws are out just slide the cover backwards then off when inside let's inspect the two springs that hold the drum up do they look warped damaged or even in fact off the mounting brackets that are either on the washing machine tub or the metal washer chassis itself. If you have to replace a spring, be very careful as the tub will fall down and it's nearly impossible to pick it back up yourself. Place a box or something else underneath the tub, and I also suggest using a trampoline spring tool when you have to remove and replace the springs. It's going to make the job a bit easier. I use these trampoline spring tools all the time, and I do have a product tag and link in the description because we use it for multiple other appliances. Next, while we have the lid of the washer off, let's take a quick look at the counterbalance weights that are on the front of the tub. In rare cases, these could be cracked or damaged, causing the machine not to transfer weight properly. The counterbalance is also underneath the front of the washing machine, and you may have to tilt the washing machine on its side to sneak a peek underneath for potential concrete dust or debris that could signal the counterbalance is damaged. However, for closer inspections, you're gonna to have to pull the front of the washing machine off. Now at the middle of the video, let's go to one of the most important favorite tests. This one's a little bit tricky though. Open the door of the washing machine on the front and try to wiggle or move the inner metal tub independently of the plastic outer tub, which you can't see at least from the front. If there's any play to the metal tub that would allow it to shift or wiggle independently of the outer tub, then it's very likely that the spider bracket has broken internally and this is a major washer killing failure. Another style of this test you can do to confirm if the tub is bad is to spin the drum by hand. You want to look to see if the inner tub is moving around in a non-circular or warped pattern that is not absolutely circular and perfect. In the example here on this washing machine, this aspect of the bracket is perfectly fine and moves solidly with no play or warping, indicating that the spider bracket isn't trashed. Another potential sign of failure would be to check the drain trap if one is available on this unit. When you take the trap out, you could see little bits of metal chunks in the trap, which would be another potential confirmation that the spider bracket is disintegrating on the inside. If that is what is wrong with your washing machine, most techs are going to quote four, five, or $600 to fix, and as a DIY job, the parts are at least $150 and take about three hours of labor to fix. In most cases, you're gonna write the machine off if this is the failure. And this is a very common situation with Samsung washing machines, so be very alert of this potential failure. Next at the rear of the washing machine, in these four areas, it is possible that shipping bolts could still be installed. If so, these secure the tub for shipping and transport but when the washing machine runs, all the force gets transferred to these bolts and chassis of the machine 
rather than the suspension springs or rods, and it causes horrific issues with the machine knocking or bouncing around. To uninstall, you simply unscrew them from the housing with a 10 millimeter socket wrench. They come from the factory with these bolts installed, and oftentimes installers on a new machine could forget to remove these bolts, which again can cause a terrible issue. Now let's move the metal panel from the rear of the washing machine for the final checks. There are four Phillips head screws that you're going to remove that I'm again removing with my drill gun. You're going to slide the panel down, then away from the rear of the washing machine. Once inside, you can start inspecting two of the rear shock absorbers. In rare instances, it's possible that these shock absorbers could have separated from each other, and sometimes you can just pop them back into place. If not, you can remove the shocks to test them for resistance. Different Samsung washing machines will have different styles of shocks for removal. In the case of this one, it's a 10 millimeter socket to remove the top and bottom of the shock. With the top removed, I can test the shock for strength and resistance. These style shocks should be extremely difficult to press and pretty much any style is going to be that way. And you can't really tell on screen, but I can assure you that this shock is very tough to press in and it's in perfect shape. You'll want to go through and test all of them individually if you believe this may be the issue. Some washing machines have different style arrangements. It may be two shocks, three or four, but this one has four and only two are accessible through the front of the machine and two from the rear. The rule of thumb is if one shock absorber is bad, I suggest replacing all of them as a set. This can get expensive, but I do have a link and product tag in the description for the best priced version of these that at least I could find online. One of the final places to check, which could cause the unit to go out of balance but is rare, is the rotor and stator system. This requires a 19 millimeter socket or impact gun to remove. This was easy to do for me on camera because we've taken it off before, but oftentimes it's very difficult to take off due to the bolt being potentially sealed with Loctite, and you may have to prevent the rotor or drum from spinning while you break the seal and remove the bolt. Once you have the bolt off, the plate needs removed evenly by pulling from both sides at an even spacing. There are very delicate magnets on the inside behind this metal plate, and it can be very difficult to dislodge. Once you have the plate off, you want to inspect the magnets hiding behind the rotor. In some cases, a magnet could be cracked or broken off or damaged in some way, and this could cause the system to rotate improperly in spin mode, causing it to go off balance. Likewise, inspect the stator that is on the wash tub for the exact same style problems. This kind of damage is pretty rare. We've seen a few have these issues and it is at least worth mentioning in the video since we're trying to be thorough. Now, speaking of being thorough on this washer, what is actually causing it to go off of balance is something even more obscure. We found that when we tried to put the stator plate back on, the spider bracket assembly was getting pushed too far into the tub assembly and during the wash and spin cycles was causing it to rub against the front of the washing machine causing it to go out of balance. There should not be as much play as you see on camera in the bracket and bearing system, and this will have to be replaced, which is why the customer threw this otherwise flawless machine out in their dumpster, and that's how we got it as a hallway. Overall, these are the eight things you wanna look for on an out of balance system, but there is one ninth thing. Another final potential cause could be some sort of PCB malfunction within the control board, but that's a very nebulous, difficult thing to diagnose. These Samsung washing machines will actually try to throw the washer out of balance during the initial spin cycle to rebalance the clothes before the full speed spin. So there is some movement and noise expected during the spin mode, but not for very long, but you get used to it after a period of time. However, the unit shaking and moving violently causing the washer to fail to spin all the way out or change the wash time to a higher number is typically symptoms of some sort of washing machine failure that involves the unit going out of balance. I hope these ideas help troubleshoot your washing machine and get it back to fixed. I hope you have a great day.